Restoring classic cars is a passion of mine. <laughs> Getting hold of used or abused or old junkers, cleaning them up inside and out, and bringing them back to their original beauty or better. I also have a passion for restoring people's lives back to their original condition after they've hit rock bottom. I'm Danny Trejo, and I can tell you from personal experience, the restoration of the mind, body, and soul is possible. Miracles do happen. After a life of drugs, alcohol, and crime, I hit rock bottom in Soledad State Prison, a place I thought I'd never leave. Instead, it was where I began to rebuild and come back. I was a lucky one and learned from my mistakes, but I truly believe that we can learn and be inspired by others so we don't make the same mistakes. I'm going to share some stories with you, stories of people from all walks of life who have gone from desperation to inspiration, who are now giving back in amazing ways. I'm Danny Trejo, and this is Rock Bottom and Back. Martin Luther King said, faith is taking the first step even when you can't see the whole staircase. This story touches my heart because it's about faith, what we believe. When I hit rock bottom in Solidarity, thought I was going to the gas chamber. I made a deal with God. I said, until I die, if you let me die with dignity, I'll say your name every day and do whatever I can for my fellow man. This is a story about a man who overcame so much and now helps thousands of people to rise up from rock bottom. I took over the New Orleans mission as the CEO um, a little over five and a half years ago. It's been an amazing journey. Uh, when I first got to the mission, it was a place where men and women received food, clothing, and shelter. Um, there was overnight stay, and maybe one or two men in the discipleship program. Um, as we've seen it today um, grow, there's probably today on the North Shore about 72 men in the program, another 30 here, so well over 100 men just in our discipleship program. And on any given month, there's probably close to 20 women that are in that one-year discipleship program, which we say disciple is helping men and women to become fully devoted followers of Christ. These men and women are getting spiritually healed, emotionally healed, physically healed. And as I always like to say, they're, they're becoming who God created them to be. And that's through many vocational programs, uh, such as uh, Mission Media is just one example. Example of their, they film documentaries, uh, they film commercials, local, working on some local TV uh, series and some promotions for some local businesses. So we're excited about that vocational element, but we're also washing cars. We wash probably about 10,000 cars each and every month and cut about 200 lawns and do contract labor throughout the community. All of that work that's done is all done by men and women that were formerly homeless and or mentally ill, suffering physical sexual abuse, sexually trafficked, so many different areas. But we see God over the course of a year transform their lives and become givers 
in the communities that they're part of. So it's been exciting to see God transform that. We have just been blessed with a brand new facility for our women, 18 acres. Uh, God sent us two amazing donors to buy a million dollar property called the Lynn Haven in Hammond. It'd be a special place uh, where women can meet their creator, come to the full relationship of knowing him as a father, and becoming all that they were destined and created for. So we are excited about just having that real transition, having a transition from the women that are here for uh, food, clothing, and shelter every night uh, to that separation where women can just be separate and apart to, to live a, a life that's unique uh, to the world, um, one where they honor and know God. You see about, um, Gosh, it's been about two and a half years ago, we again had a generous donor who blessed us with uh, what we call now the Giving Hope Retreat. It was formerly known as the K-Barbie Ranch. And that facility is 60 acres with a stocked fishing pond, a swimming pool, basketball court. It's really a place where men too can really hear from God. Um, and again, know what they were called to do and begin that journey of the discipleship program. But in a beautiful facility that's not crowded with the noise, uh, to think that God gave us a men's facility and a women's facility all in five years, um, it's just been an amazing journey to see how God could use me um, and the many men and women that he's sent to help make this happen. Um, it's been a beautiful picture of the transforming work of Christ and how he can use someone like me. You know, so often we look, think like, what can I do? How can I help change the world? I'm just David Botner. All we have to do is be a willing vessel. I grew up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and my mother was 17 when she had me. So she wasn't around a lot, and my grandmother, she was the, the babysitter. The time that she spent with me was very abusive. She was sexually abusive, uh, physically abusive. Um, and I remained in that environment from probably three till about five uh, when my mom and dad at that time got divorced. You know, I did deal with a lot of anger issues uh, uh, the, the, the better part of my life. A as a child growing up, God didn't exist. There, there was no talk of God in my home. Um, the God in my home was the God of money. You know, everything that the highs and lows of life revolved around money because we grew up so poor. Uh, my father and mother smoked marijuana, drank beer, so I found out where my dad's uh, stash of marijuana was. And at age 12, I started smoking dope and having sex because I wanted to feel so loved. And the only time that I did was when I was high or I was having sex. I got in the car business at 19 years old. I had quickly become the number one salesperson at the dealership that I worked for. So drugs escalated from just uh, marijuana now to cocaine and the whole plethora of, of drugs. And then now the, the, the resources be became more available through the money that I was making to go out and, and buy drugs. My addiction to alcohol and drugs began to spiral out of control. Emily was nagging me and I had my other girlfriend on the phone and she was trying to get me off the phone and I said just leave me alone and I had my jeans in my hand and my jeans had a belt on them. so I took the jeans and I swatted them at my wife and it was my girlfriend at the time and her name's Emily and the belt hit Emily on the top of the head. She started gushing out blood. Her blood was coming all down her face. That was the bottom for me. 
because I looked at myself that next day and I was like, you are disgusting. Who are you? Who have you become? I had no, I was so lost. I didn't realize how lost I was before that moment. And so I got in my Jag convertible and I was driving across the twin spans. Um, and I remembered thinking, I just want to drive off this bridge. I just want to die right here because I don't want to live this way anymore. And, I, and at that point, this small voice in my head said, why don't you go check out this church? And that voice was God saying, come to me. So that Sunday, I went to a little church and the pastor preached a series on the passion of Christ and detailing the life of Christ and the forgiveness that was offered at the cross. And I said, I need that. And I never felt so free in my entire life. And it was literally drug addiction went away, gambling addiction went away, sexual perversions went away. And that was the first time that I knew that if, that, that clearly, if you are walking in the will of God and on the path and purpose that he's destined you for, that nothing is impossible. So today I'm the executive director for the New Orleans Mission. My journey here was from age three of life experiences to running the largest automotive marketing and advertising companies in the nation until um, God said to me to give that business away. When I gave that business away, I really didn't know what the next step was, but I knew that you listen to God's voice, get on the path that he's planned for you, that the destiny will be a good one. I'm excited today to see where my life is, to see everything that God has brought me from and everything he's brought me through. I'm excited to know God as my dad, and I'm excited to see the beautiful wife that I have, the amazing children that now have a destiny and a path where they don't have to suffer the same things that their father suffered. I'm excited that thousands of people are coming to know Christ as their father and getting set free from every pain that they've experienced in their path. I'm excited that God has saw fit to make me the executive director of an organization that can transform lives and to be a father today who can love his family and to encourage them to seek his will for their lives. It's beautiful and I, I couldn't be more uh, grateful to the father for everything that he's done and looking back at my experiences and saying, thank you, father, for setting me free. Growing up in LA, I knew a lot of bikers. They have their own culture, a way of life, but they want the same things in life we do. Bikers know everyone crashes. Some get back on, some don't, some can't. This is a story about one such biker who hit rock bottom and came back. I was finishing up 11 years in prison and Old biker, Christian biker, came in and um, eight months before I was released and I gave my life to Christ. Totally sold out, 100%. It wasn't words, it was a heart, spirit, and body, soul transformation. And not long after I was released, um, Pat Robinson of the 700 Club had heard about this biker who had lived this very, very uh, dark life involved in so many different things and he found out that um, I was a disciple of Jesus Christ and became interested so he contacted me and we went on and did the first segment called a hardened biker switches gears on the 700 club and within the 
first nine minutes of the first airing of that film, uh, there were 574 people called in and gave their life to Jesus Christ. And I knew at that point that the Lord was opening up doors for ministry. And um, through guidance of a lot of different good Christian people that I had a lot of trust in that had proven themselves to be true disciples of Jesus Christ, I started asking questions and began receiving guidance. And then Q.D. Hicks and Quinn Peterson of Fellowship of Motorcycle Ministries came and heard me speak at a big biker church, um, uh, Broken Chains Ministries, and uh, asked me to come on board for the first Christian motorcycle rally in Sturgis, South Dakota. And that was a blessing for these two men and their ministry to come into my life and into my ministry. The salvations that took place there at Sturgis um, and the vision that God had gave QD Hicks, um, it come about and now every year we're a part of this large Christian rally at Sturgis the month before um, Sturgis Bike Week. Our ministry of Hardened Biker Switches Gears uh, we get invitations all over the United States and other countries to go and share my life story. And when we do, they will show the film uh, with Danny Trejo introducing me. And we get such um, replies and people with a heartfelt uh, tears in their eyes about if Christ did that in your life, I know he'll do it in my life or my son or my daughter or, or my husband. And the film, actually, I have seen through multi-thousands of people across the United States. It gives them hope where mothers and wives and husbands, they're at their end with their loved ones and they have no hope. All they know to do is just grab on and pray but they don't have a lot of hope. And whenever I'm able to share this, what Christ did in my life through this film, I see this spark of light come into their life, into their hearts and their spirits and say, you know what, if God did it for you, I know he'll do it for my child or my wife or my husband. And so I'm so blessed to be able to share this project that Mr. Earl heard, a man that I love very much, um, God gave him a vision and I'm a part of that vision. And now we're able to give hope to the hopeless. As a young child, I was a very happy child, had everything in life as a child that I would ever ask for. Uh, very blessed, uh, two parents that loved me more than anything in the world. Uh, around 12, uh, my life really took a dramatic turn from uh, the loving and Christian upbringing that I had from my parents. We started um, really stealing beer out of a, one of my friends, his dad's refrigerator and drinking in the evenings. And eventually it turned into smoking pot. And at the age of roughly 14, uh, I was introduced to a needle with heroin. And shortly after that, a needle with cocaine. And at 15 years old, I became a full-fledged needle freak, heroin and cocaine junkie. My life went into a total tailspin. I hit rock bottom in my life. Um, I would say at the age of 17. I had moved to California and I was uh, introduced to the motorcycle gang lifestyle. It was one of the most violent and notorious motorcycle gangs ever exist on the face of the earth. And that's where I felt comfortable, I was accepted. I was in charge of transporting illegal immigrants. They had caught on the border patrols to what I was doing. And their higher ups had gave the order, shoot the tires out. 
They shot 47 bullet holes through my van and two children that I was transporting to Denver was sitting against the back doors of my van and they were shot through the back doors and the two children lost their life. And so I did the next eight years, two steel doors from death row. At that point in my life, I knew I had a decision to make and it was suicide or either accept Jesus Christ in my life. The Christian Motorcycle Association came in to spend the weekend with us. They rode their motorcycles into the prison and there was one man, Don Johnson from Coleman, Alabama. Don Johnson came into the prison yard as an evangelist and as a witness of Jesus Christ to bring the love of Jesus to the inmates and convicts. And the Lord had laid on his heart that I was in his bullseye and he came to me, looked at me across the prison yard and locked eyes on me. So I walked across the prison yard and I said, Mister, I said, I really don't appreciate you staring at me like that. He said, Jesus Christ has spoke to my heart about you. I would appreciate if you stand there, be quiet and listen to the message that I have for you. It's amazing that when I accepted Jesus Christ into my life, the transformation that happened, uh, not only delivered from the drugs, but I had a focus in life. I had a way and people that came to me uh, that was on a mission to help me to be a success in my life. And through these people that I know that the Lord sent in my path that really encouraged me, inspired me, and I have to give them the credit uh, for being this big part of my life. My hope is that many, many millions of people across the world will come to realize the sacrifice that Jesus Christ and accept him into your life. And then you can go and shine the light of Christ to the other people that are less fortunate than you since Christ. I know what peace is, I know what happiness is, and I know that I came from rock bottom and I'm back up again. Giving back inspires others. That's the real key to life, I know. Everything good that has happened to me has happened as a direct result of helping someone else. I found my way up from rock bottom, and now I give back whenever I can. And so can you. Live in peace, love, teach, and learn. And remember, never give up. Recovery is real.